again, I'm Henry T. This show is about inspiration. It's called Be Inspired with Henry T. And I'll tell you what, it's a lot of fun to come in here every day to meet different guests that have these great stories. I bet you have a story. And if you do, why keep it in here? Get on the phone, get on the computer, get in touch with me. I'm right here at KZQ TV waiting for your story so we can express it out here across New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, and Texas. So I'm asking you to call this number 884-8355 and let's express your great story. Today, Mike Lipte is here, a school teacher with a creative idea and a great big heart. Wow, where did he come from? Who inspired Mike to be successful? You want to meet him? He's right here. Mike, how are you, buddy? Great, Henry. Nice to uh, great be to here. Great to see you. My right, goodness. Good when I heard about your story, yeah. I was so compelled to dial your number, oh, find nice. out who's this man <laughs> who's a school teacher, right. eight hours a day, who wants to go eight more hours after five o'clock <laughs> to teach and introduce soccer to youth in your community. And then you've got another idea. But let's find out about the soccer experience. No, better than that, who motivated Mike Lipte back in the day to be successful? Let's go there first. Uh, definitely my parents. You know, they're a huge motivation for me to, you know, they're, they're, they're ones that would, they're kind of strict and like, hey, you know what, you need to go get this done and, and you know, just stay on it, you know, be a leader, that kind of thing. So they've been really uh, inspirational for me. Yeah. So what can you recall about their success that they shared with you or nuggets they threw in your way to make you self-conscious about, hey, I better study more. Hey, I better be more outgoing. Right. I better achieve some goals. What is a goal? What do you recall about their leadership? Well, just not giving up, you know, and, and just seeing things through and doing the right thing. Uh, that's pretty much it right there. Wow. Yeah. As they say back in the day, be a good boy. Here are right. the rules. Don't do this and don't do that. Exactly. Anything specific? Uh, you know, not, nothing really specific. Just um, it, it's difficult, you know, uh, especially now with everything being so expensive and just finding a way to raise a family in these times and, you know, carving out a path and getting everyone there. And, you know, my uh, sisters and I were all pretty successful. So my parents did a, you know, a really good job. So, yeah. In order to be a school teacher, you have to go to college. You have to get a degree. Absolutely. That's a lot in itself. What do you think? That's a lot of hard work for sure. I, uh, I've been to several colleges, you know, I went to college, uh, um, before the military, during the military, after the military, you know, so I, I've done several years of college and got my master's in education and wow. working now as a as a school teacher so. and a school teacher yep. at friendly harrison mid school ladies and gentlemen i spent a lot of time out there back in the day i love the south valley and i love harrison mid school yeah ernie Pyle, rio grande high school yeah. that whole community yeah. it's a great it's community deep in my heart Absolutely. Amen. Well, what do you do specifically at Harrison? Well, I'm a math teacher. I, I teach sixth grade math. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's good times. <laughs> Amen. And how do the youngsters receive you out there, Mike? Um, well, gosh, I mean, I hope that they would enjoy my class and, uh, and, and really, you know, excel at math. It's, that's any teacher's goal, really. Amen. <laughs> well, you know, obviously you're doing the job well, or right. you wouldn't be out there in that campus. <laughs> that's right. But you take your work seriously right. for eight hours, and then you go do something else. Fire up our audience as to what you do after school. All right. So, yeah, I have... This uh, program that I've created is called Roadrunner Youth Organization. It's a uh, it's a nonprofit organization, and we help low income kids from the South Valley, you know, really get involved with competitive soccer. Now, they also have to maintain high grade standards, right? So we're trying to get them motivated 
to really focus on their academics. That's our ultimate goal with these guys. You know, so we provide them a lot of training with soccer, but we also provide them a lot of opportunities to excel academically, you know, tutoring, um, also whatever they need, just following up with them. Hey, did you get your homework done? What do you got going on in this class? What do you got going on in this class? Mm -hmm. You know, just continuously following up with them, making sure that they're staying on track academically, you know, and then, you know, their, their big payoff is they get to then also train soccer and, you know, get to really go out there and, and, and play competitively. What, is it working? I think so. Yeah, absolutely. What so far, I mean, we had a, a few students who have done really well academically. Um, one of the guys in our program, he actually just got the top score for seventh grade for algebra. Um, wow. Yeah, he took this test, you know, the whole school took the test. And sure enough, one of my players, you know, top score. I wow. was, you know, blown away. And then also, you know, I have a guy who uh, first, year, first year ever making honor roll was this year, mm. you know. And, and how awesome is that? You know, he was so proud of that certificate, gets to take it home, show his mom and, you know, hang that up on the fridge. Eh, you know, it's, but it's really awesome. When you first met him, right. was he fired up about school? No, not so much. How did you develop <laughs> that interest and that effort to be an honor roll student? Well, you know, what we do is we say you, you got to work hard on the field, but you also have to work hard in the classroom. It's sort of the, the culture that we're developing at our organization where, yeah, you work hard, you perform in class, but you also need to work hard and perform on the field. So they're, they go together. Right. And so some of them are doing really well on the field and they're like, oh, man, I really need to catch up on my classroom part, you know. And so wow. they've been really doing their part to try to do better in the classroom with their academics. And so and right now, as you see them developing academically and yeah. athletically, for sure. Right. Do you think this is a catalyst for them to really become self-conscious about their and the academic mandates? Absolutely. I mean, you know, these guys, they, they start now to really, um, if, if they're doing poorly in school, they'll, they'll try to catch it themselves. You know, at first it was like, oh man, coach is gonna be mad if I get this grade. But now it's like, oh man, I got this bad grade. I better do something about it. You know, it's not even, so it's transferred from, you know, hey, coach might be mad if I get this bad grade to, you know what, I need to get this good grade because I feel good about getting wow. a good grade. You know what I mean? So they, they, they've really come a long way. How fulfilling, how, how does it feel to you evaluating the end of a day or on report card day to see that sort of development? You know, I, it's really awesome. Uh, I, I love it. You know, that's why I continue to do it day in and day out and um, like see these uh, guys be successful, wow. you know? Now you have something else going that's connected with these successful roadrunners. Yes, absolutely. So our Roadrunner Youth Organization, we have you know three big things: academics, we're uh, competitive sports, but leadership development. And on that part, we do a lot of service learning, right? And so we have our big service learning project coming up, where the kids who I train on a regular basis in soccer, they're going to go out to a homeless shelter. And they are going to put on soccer clinics teaching homeless children in the South Valley area how to play soccer, run some drills, play some games, have a good time. We're going to do this for about two weeks in June, see how it goes, and we'll you know, reevaluate to see how many more we could possibly do throughout the year and when, what's the most optimal time, that kind of thing. So, Your successful roadrunners, your successful students right now open up their hearts to go do something for kids that are less fortunate than them. Exactly. How's that working? So that's going to be awesome. I know that the, they're really excited um, for this opportunity to go back out there, you know, to give back to the community. So they're really looking forward to this, you know, because, yeah, many of them, they're, they're low income themselves, right? But to then have an opportunity to work with kids who have even less, you know, almost nothing. I mean, that's going to be really amazing for them as individuals, but also, you know, it's going to be just great for the community because we're going to have people who are then going to develop more understanding of other people's situations. And wow. so it's great. Is there a website, a phone number that our audience can contact you immediately so their youngsters can take part in their roadrunner experience, first of all. Sure. And then, are there, if there's homeless people out there that want to be taught by your organization, 
Throw the information at them. Yeah, absolutely. We have the information for the homeless soccer clinics on our website. Um, our web website is www.roadrunneryouth.org. And the phone number? 505-944-6011. Uh, wow. Yeah. Where do you picture long range where all these ideas are going? What do you see in the big picture? Well, long range, ultimately, I, I'd like to have a, uh, a facility. You know, I'd like to have um, a vans. In the, in the shorter long-term distance, I really would like some 15-passenger uh, vans so that I can actually reach out to different schools. Because one of the big barriers for having kids participate is transportation, right? You really can't participate if you can't get there. And so that's our first big hurdle that we have to try to overcome is raising up enough money to get some 15 passenger vans so that we can transport kids from their schools or neighborhoods to wow. training facilities or tutoring locations and then also to games and practices and things like that. So trying to overcome those barriers. Raising money means donations. It does, absolutely. <laughs> Call out to your audience right now. Get them so interested and compassionate today that they want to donate to your program. What do you tell them? Well, you know, we're definitely an awesome organization that's doing really well in this community and we're doing good things. And I think that every dollar donated, of course, is going to be used in a, a, just an amazing capacity to help the kids down there in the South Valley. Um, it's really building community, helping these kids get involved with soccer, helping them with their education. Um, and, you know, you had asked long term, like long term, you know, I'd like a, a facility down the, down the line, right? And as these kids get a lot older, we're going to start getting them uh, prepared for college testing, you know, like the, the different tests that they have to take to get into college and help them with that process as well. And then, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Hey, thank you, So Henry much T. for being here today, Mike. All right, thank you, Throw sir. Throw the phone number one more time. It's uh, 505-944-6011. All right. Wow, what a story. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your big heart and reaching out into the community. And I would love to go out there and get a camera and meet some of your roadrunners. Oh, for sure. And get them in the experience of helping the homeless. That would be powerful. Absolutely. Way to go. Congratulations. Right. Thank you, sir. Our new friend, Mike Liptape. Wow, what a story. Man, that gets me fired up. Can you imagine? Can you see kids helping kids? Ooh, open up their heart and sharing their soccer skills with kids that don't have much? That hits me right in the heart. And please, call his number and donate to his organization. Well, that's going to do it today for Mike. We're going to come back. And we have another inspirational story. Stay right there. This is KZQ, Channel 32. Funding for today's programming has been brought to you in part by Malloy Dodge, Albuquerque's new and used Dodge and Ram truck dealer since 1955. I'm Nick Malloy from Malloy Dodge. For four generations, we've been serving thousands of New Mexicans from all across our fine state. Over 65 years of trust. Our family serving yours. Malloy Dodge, we're proud to stand behind our community. Thank you for supporting family programming. This program has been sponsored in part by Butterfield Jewelers, located at 2411 San Pedro Northeast, offering appraisals, handcrafted jewelry, gold and jewelry buying, and jewelry and watch repair. Butterfield Jewelry is owned and operated by Mike, Teresa, and Bernie Butterfield. Butterfield Jewelry, 505-884-5747. Today I want to share a story with you but a longtime friend. I know him as Coach L, affectionately Coach L, Coach L Guadagnoli. Baseball coach, entrepreneur, 
musician, his priorities are straight, great husband, great dad, the list goes on. Baseball coach at Albuquerque High a few years back in a program that really needed his lift up, got lifted up in two quick years. He led a team that had not gone to the playoffs for 19 years. He led them to the playoffs in two seasons. He's a remarkable man, and he inspires me. Today he's going to inspire you. Coach L, how are you, buddy? Great, Henry. It's great, great to, be to here. see you. It's good to see you, too. Wow. You've been everywhere, around yeah. the globe, Yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> playing your music, lifting yes. people up, teaching people how to drive. Wow. First of all, how's your beautiful family? Hey, they're all families. Great, healthy, and that's all you can ask for, you know. That's the main thing. They're all doing good. And your head coach, your beautiful wife. Oh, my agent. I call her my agent. Yeah, she takes care of me. She books me and she does a lot of, uh, she keeps me on a straight path. Let's start there. Okay. How grateful are you for having such a strong family and that support from them every day? Uh, it's, it's big. You know, it's, it, without them, you, you can't survive. You need that family bond and and push and when one's down another one brings the other one up and it's like a team you know let's go back okay from the beginning mom and dad <laughs> how did they inspire you to say l you can be anything you want in fact don't just settle for one thing do a bunch of things who inspired coach l to be the many successful things that you are today believe it or not my grandparents my grandparents are the ones that finished raising me, and I would go back as a little kid, and on uh, both sides, they're the grandparents. And, you know, the Italian side, the Guadagnolis, they were coal miners. So hardworking, and, you know, I'd see my uncles come in full of coal dust, and my great-grandfather died from the black lung. So I, I remember the sound of the coal going down the coal chute, my grandparents cooking with coal and wood, and on that side, the other side, Martinez is my grandfather from, was a legislator. He was a school board uh, executive for Wagon Mound. His family were sheep herders. They used to put him on the train to come to Manal. That's where he went to school. And he's at the roundhouse. And so with his pushing, and he was a musician, so he would tell me when I was playing music, he, they wouldn't get it, invest in, in my gear. And so I had problem crud, junk drums and things. And he told me, he says, well, if you can go to band, you go to band and you learn to read music and start playing music, then we'll invest. Yeah. 1964, they bought me a Ludwig drum set from, in Santa Fe from Casa de Musica. Yeah, and $800. And then we went to Seaboard Finance and I had to pay for those drums. But the difference was the payment was $8. $8 a month. I paid him off, Henry, in a year from my music, from playing. What a story. Yeah. Learning responsibility, a craft at the same yeah. time, yeah. a way to make a living, mm -hmm. a way to make people happy, yeah. to entertain them. Yep. Wow. And music is difficult. Learning how to read it and write it like you do, mm -hmm. and then get the instrument in your hand, and here we go. Yes. Congratulations. Fortunate, fortunate. I played in two college stage band, Highlands University stage band, and I played in Len Benton Community College stage band. Also was able to perform with Lawrence Welk stage band on the Queen Mary, Queen Mary in Long Beach, California. Wow. So yeah, it was music was a good thing. And then let's go to your athletic background. Okay. Great athlete, uh, oh, coach. Yeah, it was. And you lifted kids up at Albuquerque mm -hmm. High. What a special story that is. Do you mind going there no, and sharing fine. that you know, wonderful story? Yeah, I was uh, called. It was I was in Hawaii. I was visiting the University of Hawaii, their football program, because I know I know a lot of people there. And I got a phone call, said, hey, would you like to be the baseball coach? Then I said, you know, let me meet with you when I get back. Met with them when, when we went back, and I said, you know, this program's been pretty much in the, in the waste basket for X amount of years. But I also told him, I said, when I got here, I said, let's walk the, the field. It was, the field had been in compliance. 
pitcher's mound wasn't in line with home plate and second base. Wow. And I said, your, your first base is, is crooked. It's not even in line. I said, so a lot of things have to be repaired, fixed. And when I got the job, I called my buddies across the country. Coach, what do you need? Let's think. Whatever you can send me is a blessing. So I got checks came in and we got uniforms. There wasn't even equipment. Henry, there was no baseballs. And wow. so I got all my buddies that I've known for across Oregon, Washington, Hawaii, Florida, Mississippi, and they sent. And before you know it, we had the field done. Uh, they redid it. I had two mowers. I left them with $8,000 greens mower uh, for the infield. And wow. We did the infield. And so built it up, started winning ball games. People started, whoa, they took notice. I had four major league teams come out and set up bullpen. Brolio Hernandez was one of my pitchers. He threw 92 miles an hour, so he was a plus. And got him a full ride. He got a full scholarship, Cochise. Wow. And then the University of Georgia asked him to finish his career out, but uh, instead he picked Highlands. But that's okay, you know. But you went to the playoffs. You went fun. to the playoffs, yeah. And so. uh, then God called you to go other places to mm -hmm. share your great talents, and, yeah. and then you created a school for driving. You're teaching young kids how to drive. Yes. Helping them become better on the road getting them insurance rates. What are the benefits of that experience? Well, that, Henry, I'm making the road safer. Because when I left music, when I left music, I was in Oregon and I quit and I went to work for United Parcel Service. I was a driver for UPS for eight years and I'd be retired if I stayed a driver. And the hard part is uh, they asked me to go to management and I went into management for UPS and they put me in industrial engineering and the hard part there, Henry, was uh, when you're with UPS, it's kind of like the service, where they send you, you go, and that's the way it is. Well, I trained drivers for them in Portland, Seattle, Washington, Oakland, California, San Francisco, California, and Anchorage, Alaska. Wow. So I got to fly the system, and with the flying the system, when I left UPS, I was transferred to Brazil with the air expansion, and I said, enough's enough. I traveled less when I was in a rock and roll band than I did with UP. So I was on the road a ton. I saw my family probably one year. I lived in the Clarion Hotel in Anchorage, Alaska for a year. So I got to see my family every other weekend. And I said, no, my family is more important. And I resigned, took my stock money, moved back to New Mexico. And one day I was coaching ball because of Rocky Long. Rocky's a good friend yeah. of mine. And... Uh, I sat there and, how can I get closer to my players? What did I do for UPS? Train drivers. Da, driver's ed. And Let's I, talk about that. Yeah. You've seen young kids really literally learn how to drive the correct way. Yes. And you've helped them with insurance rates also, mm -hmm. which helps today. Yeah. But they are really better on the road avoiding accidents. Mm -hmm. What literally develops into a young driver who really becomes a very good driver at that young age? The main thing is, is the fundamentals. I teach my class what UPS taught me because they fixed me as a driver. And once you learn the five seeing habits, that's what I teach, the Smith system. The five seeing habits is what's taught across the nation with UPS, FedEx. They instill you some fundamental rules. And if you learn those rules, like the Ten Commandments, aim high in steering, get the big picture, leave yourself it out, make sure they see you, and keep your eyes moving. And I remember it as all good kids like milk, an acronym in it. And it works, and if they learn that, because I also do traffic court. So once a month for the courts, they send the bad drivers, the ones who make the mistakes, and they get tickets, and they have to get, so it doesn't go on their insurance, their records, they send them to me. So I do a traffic court too. Amazing. Yeah, and, and wow. that's where it comes in. Give us a little driving lesson right now. I'm sure. Uh, and hopefully they'll sign up to your school. Sure. Which we should put up your number right now on the screen. What is your driving school number? How can we get in touch with Coach L? They usually get in touch with the office. It's 505-771-8334. Or they'll tell them, call Coach L right away, my cell. 505-573-1824. And I'm at the Unser Museum. 
with the uh, Allenser and great facility. Uh, I love it. The Unser's are fabulous. And if you haven't seen the gem, that's the, the two museums there with all the Unser family. Now, give us a driving lesson. Well, okay. The biggest thing is, is what I tell the kids, if you're going to drive and you're going to get the big picture, leave yourself an out. Always have room around you. Four second room, etc. If you watch people in Albuquerque, no blinkers. We're rated. What? The state is rated. The, we're the second worst drivers in the nation. Come on. Yeah. And it's sad. We run over more bicyclists and pedestrians than anybody. Gee. And it's sad because I tell them, get the big picture is keep your eyes up. You know, look, aim high and steering, get your head up so you can see. Go from ditch to ditch, sidewalk to sidewalk. And when you do that, you get the big picture. Now I can see what's going on around me. It's kind of like being a ball player. If you're a football player and you're wearing blinders, you're going to get clocked. Well, same with driving. If you don't keep your eyes open. What if we leave out? Let's cover it quickly before we get out of here. But I want to ask you a really sure. serious question. You said uh, your wife was so instrumental in your life. Yes. In front of God and everybody. Mm -hmm. How much do you love that pretty uh, woman? Without her, she's my equal. Um, we're on the same level. You know, sometimes she's up here. I'm down here. And, you know, without a good woman behind you, we're not successful. Wow. Even though we took the bite of the apple, you know, I always put that, you know, they're the ones that keep us on a path. And yeah. that's the whole key, commitment. Commitment, commitment, commitment. And listen, you know, I don't argue, I just, uh, whatever, you know. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Give us your number real quick. 505-771-8334 is the office. Amen. You got it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Henry. Appreciate wow. it. Man of versatile talents, nice guy too, <laughs> humility plus, and has his priorities straight. He loves his wife and children and takes care of them, and he's a lot of fun too. And he's gonna teach Henry T, the old dog, new tricks about driving and maybe playing the drums. <laughs> wow. We'll be back with more inspiration. What a blessing to have him coach on with us today on KZQ. Channel 32. If you've got a story, don't forget to call me with it, 907-4523, or email originalgameface at gmail.com. It's been great talking with you today, right here on KZQ. Remember, we're on every morning right here, The Inspired with Henry T., 8 o'clock on KZQ. Channel 32.